Hey, Alec Miller here, founder of Rose and Rogues, and today I actually wanted to do something a little bit different. I sat down for a conversation with a friend and recorded the whole thing. He was having a hard time dealing with some emotions after recently watching the Astraeus videos. Um, if you haven't seen them, they're these phenomenal pieces, I mean, masterworks um, of 3D animation that are done um, in the Warhammer 40k universe. I think he's just dropped episode 5 recently, and they just keep getting better and better. So good, in fact, that it's hard to believe that it's all done by just one person. I mean, this type of work rivals the work of places like Digic and, um, you know, Mothership and others that have been around for years. You know, they're doing this, this one guy is doing so much, and you can't help but kind of look at it and compare it to yourself and wonder, well, why haven't I created something like that? And why aren't I doing better than I thought it would be by now? And so we kind of wanted to break down this idea of comparison and what it's like to how sometimes, you know, really amazing, inspiring stuff actually doesn't inspire us, but instead makes us question ourselves and, and our goals and how we've gotten to where we've gotten after this whole time. So I wanted to go through this with him and kind of reverse engineer his emotions and see if we can't learn something from this. It's a very long video and I appreciate if you sit through it, but if not, I'll be cutting it into smaller sections in the future. But I think it's a really interesting talk and if you have some time to put it on while watching dishes I, or mowing the lawn or something, I think you'll find a lot of value there. So now that you know the context, here's our conversation. I want to kind of reverse engineer your emotions and then from there get on to like something hopefully sure. productive or, you know, at the very least we can process the emotions. So um, it, you mentioned before, like a little bit earlier about how uh, part of it rubs you the wrong way because it's like everything you wanted to do. Yeah. And I, and I was bringing up that as well. It's like every film student we graduate and we're like, we're going to make this great film all by myself and I don't need anyone else. And now like, and then reality that, is in the well, what we thought was reality, right? Like what we thought, right. Our experience was, oh, I can't do this. And everyone's telling me to, to give up and that this isn't possible. And then someone comes along and shows, it's, it's almost like, uh, I don't know if you've ever done rock climbing, but there's those moments where if you, if you do like an indoor gym, let's say, and you have, or even after, but there's a certain trail that you can never do. It's like, oh, it's too hard. Uh, I would always feel like it was just impossible, right? Like I would sit there and in my reality, it's like, this isn't possible. Nobody can do this stupid one. It, the the handholds are too far apart. They're too small. It, this is stupid. And then someone would come along and do it. And I, and I would feel the same way that you're feeling with, about this. It's like, I hate you. It's like you just showed that it's not a problem with the, the problem isn't the problem. Like I'm the problem. Imagine you are a writer of songs dedicate years to writing songs you get married you're trying your best you're still struggling ups and downs all that and you hear this song you're like this is beautiful and then you read vocalist same name composer same name guitar player same name drums same name Vi music video <laughs> same name and it just it you're just like this is not possible and then you write it listen to it again and again and again and you focus on every detail and you're like it's flawless on every detail. That's just infuriating. <laughs> mm -hmm. But so why? Like what what is it that so part of it's a comparison. We've we've established that a little bit, I think, mm -hmm. of what you thought you could do. Um but if what is it about it being flawless that is that is so infuriating? Why is that like if it had air issues like okay, you know, it's good, but I can see, you know, he screwed up here or like or, you know, there's that, that frame rates off or something like that, or, you know, that render was noisy. So I think part of it is because first of all, it makes you feel inferior. It makes you feel like all your efforts, all your ups and downs, all your victories and losses don't mean much because look at that, <laughs> you know, kind of like a, that's a, the original Iron Man when, the boss yells at the scientist and he's like, Tony Stark did this in the cave. With some yeah. Boss. <laughs> and that's that kind of feeling that and you have that big guy going like this guy mm -hmm. did it in New Zealand on a Mac laptop. <laughs> <laughs> With <laughs> dial up internet. <laughs> and I think the writing is actually really good in that scene. It's really stuck with me when the guy just says, I'm not Tony Stark. Right. It's like, 
I think that's a really honest answer. And it's just, it's a scene that still resonates with me. I don't like that answer, but <clears throat> it's true. It's what, true. What you would answer at the moment, I feel like I would say. No, no, it, it's true. Right. It's true. But like, I don't think these people are gods among men. I think a good oh, example, yeah. the story I always think of, and it's a pretty well-known story is, and I forget the guy's name, unfortunately, but there's a, I believe a surgeon, um, a medical student anyway, who um, was studying the human body. And people used to think it was impossible to run a four minute mile. Like they just thought that's not, you just can't do it. Physically, it's impossible to run a mile in, in four minutes or six minutes. I forget what it was. I think it was four. Mm -hmm. um, under four minutes. Nobody could do it. Nobody could do it. So he studied the body. He's like, there's no reason physically we can't do this. And it's been, it was like hundreds of years, zero documentation of anyone running and people trying and competing, you know, for hundreds of years trying to do this. Maybe someone did way back in the past and we just didn't know. But as far as our current documentation, so he went out in his practice, like just ran until he broke the four minute mile. The next year, six more people broke it. And so this happens all the time, right? So it's like, I do think, in the, and so in that sense, you have to look at this guy as maybe it was impossible for you to have made a solo thing. Maybe this guy did come along. Cause like, and I brought this up to you. I think there's a lot going on in the background. Like we always have to admit to ourselves, like there's so much that we don't know. Right. So like I brought up like, okay, he's making $14,000 minimum a month on Patreon. Okay. So if I give you $14,000 a month, at least right now, we don't know how he started. Right. He didn't start. Right. He didn't start. But, he, but once again, his first one, though, was also, you know, 14 seconds long. Yeah. So it's like you have to remember that yeah, stuff. Like you can't like, count the journey, the context, for sure. And right. You know, so this guy has a family, a healthy spiritual life, and a good relationship with his family. Maybe he does. Maybe and he does. Out, and maybe he does. Yeah, you need to more, I'm, more I'm research. Just gonna quit. I'm just gonna quit. <laughs> I mean, it's possible. It's possible. Um, but I, I and like so what I why why I brought up Last Man Standing was that, you know Dan Levisi's story is like lost my friends lost my girlfriend lost everything like just did was in a dark hole for a year or two just dying like to make this thing because I had to get it out and it's like um, that I think we don't see like we see this awesome book filled with tons of artwork. We see this awesome, hear this awesome song. That's so perfect. What we don't see is just like the sleepless nights, the pain and everything else. So th that's yeah. something to remember. And it's like the reasons why it rubs me the wrong way is because I feel like you shouldn't do that. Well, you have to ask yourself, would I be willing to make that sacrifice? No. Like it, would I be willing to sacrifice, you know, my yeah, friends and family that's what to view is like, I don't think anyone should ever do that. sacrifice. I mean, I'm not going to make that judgment for other people. That's that's up to them to live you their own. Recommend it to anybody for sure. Uh, uh, I'm a little farther on that that spectrum, dude. I've spent the last two years working two full time jobs, pretty much. So I I don't know. But I know for me, and I still feel pretty healthy. And I mean, not physically right now. I need to work out, but I still feel pretty like. No, but you, you know, recommend if 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 you would hear me saying, okay. I think I'm losing my life, but I'm, I just can't stop. What would you say to me? When it, when it comes to your wife, I, I'd probably say your relationship's going to last longer. I don't know a single yeah. famous person and maybe they're all just lying. I don't know a single famous person that says I would, I regret having kids and not making more music or more movies. Like every single famous person is like, I would, I would give up all the stuff I have today for my family. Right. And, and maybe because that's what they have to say. Like there is that potential mm -hmm. that's, that's like if society would come and, w and wait, like you're going to go back home to your wife saying like, no, 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 I totally would have like divorced my wife if she told me to stop working tomorrow. It's like, are you going to, what did you go home to that? And then she's like, Oh, I see how it is. And then it, like, so in some sense, I don't think people are allowed to say the, the opposite of like, I would sacrifice not literally like my kid, but I, I would, if it came down to either, <clears throat> having a family or doing this thing I'm passionate about. I'd rather do the thing I'm passionate about. I think very few people would say that. I think a lot of people have lived it. They do. I think a lot of people have lived it. I think you, I mean, Ben, go freaking cut his ear off, dude. I wouldn't recommend people cut their ears off. Yeah. You know, it's Lucas uh, got a divorce. Dude, yeah. divorce. Yep. And so it's like, I think, I, th I think there's this, have you seen full metal alchemist brotherhood yeah. or the original? I do think that equation is kind of true. Um, this idea that in order to make something, you have to give something up, right? We can't create or destroy matter. We can only rearrange it. 
For sure. And so I think the same thing with energy. Like we can't create more time. We can just rearrange our time. And so when it comes to like, if I want to create something this beautiful, you know, what do I have to, where am I going to find that time? And it's like, well, I'm going to suck it from, you know, my relationships, my sleep, my, you know, everything else. And then that of course is going to get starved and, and die. You know, that's what bothers me. Is it how <clears throat> passively they're rewarded for doing something that is in my mind unhealthy? I, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as investment. It's like, I, I, here's what I wouldn't recommend doing either. Okay. I wouldn't recommend you spending every last cent you had right now to buy Bitcoin. That's not healthy. It's a very, very risky investment. Yeah. But I bought Bitcoin. I bought, well, here's the thing. I bought Bitcoin uh, like a, a month ago or no, two weeks ago or so. And it's already doubled. So it's like, well, if I would have, if I would put everything in it, if I would put all my money into Bitcoin, yeah. I would have doubled my money. Right. That's not a good thing. To, I don't recommend people do that, but it's, it's a risk and an, an investment and it's a heavy investment all, you know, at once and, and, and then sustained for a long time. It's like, how do you, how does the universe not reward that? And it, you know, if you believe in, I, I look at it as a math equation, right? It's like, like I said, it's like that full metal alchemist thing. It's like, well, if I'm willing to sacrifice my arm, I can create this thing, you know, but that's, a, I, do I think you should do that? No, but that's, that's the, the math of the world, right? Is, you know, investment and time and energy, you know, yeah, equal and opposite reaction, right? Every action. Like for every one of these, anom- totally true. And for every one of these anomalies, there's all the unheard stories of people who do the same risk investment and it doesn't pay off. I think there's tons of them that commit suicide, frankly. Yeah. I think there's a ton of people that just get crazy into something and then they, it doesn't work out. It collapses and they fail. This is why I didn't move to LA when I graduated from film school. Every one of my friends was like, I'm going to move to LA. And I just watched as one by one of them died. Like not literally for most of them. Uh, most of them, it was, they would move out there. They'd get chewed up and spat out because they had no leads. They had no connections. They went up working at a sushi restaurant for three months. It's incredibly expensive to live in, in LA. Uh, they lose all their money and they move back here with their parents and go work at a bank. It's very, it's like the complete opposite, completely soul sucking and very stable sure. as opposed to, you know, artistic and not stable is to get consistently good. Right. So for most people, I think the answer is like, don't do that, that, that thing. And then you see the, you see the, um, uh, what should we call it again? So I'm trying to remember the, an actor like that, you know, you see the Harrison Fords, I guess it's like, Oh, I was just working at it a, a, as a bartender or as a server and then became immensely famous. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, for every one of those, there's every other person at that restaurant that didn't get picked up. That was hoping they were right. And because they weren't born with a rugged jaw and didn't get in a car accident that gave them a cool scar. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, yeah. and that's kind of that thing, right. That, um, you, you pass up opportunities. You don't make the sacrifice. And then one day you're scrolling and like, I know someone, oh, this one's frustrating. This one's even more frustrating. You know, more frustrating. Yeah. That's and, insane. You know, lotteries are a bad investment, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. but so in Holland, one of our neighbors, she was the only one who didn't buy lottery tickets because it's a bad investment. Mm-hmm. And then her street got picked for the lottery and all of her neighbors made hundreds mm-hmm. and hundreds of thousands. Right. That. I mean, I think that's actually morally not very good. I think I think that's the problem with lottery is it it, it feeds off of negative, anxious emotions. It makes everyone go, oh, that's why I need to buy, you know, because what if that happens? It, it's FOMO. It's FOMO is incredibly powerful, right? It's like, oh, I, I'm going to... And that's exactly what happened. Like the fear that, oh, I'm going to be the only one that didn't get this yeah. thing. And that happened. And then that happens. Yeah. No, she did the right thing. She really did. Mm-hmm. But it's frustrating that that is like oh, yeah. that you, it's like, right, your neighbors. It's not like some random person. No. It's it feels a, like, it feels like God, like, hitting you with a lightning bolt, right? Yeah. It's right. like, F you. <laughs> like, you right. suck. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you, like, save your money, not spend it on worthless crap, like, not buy this lottery ticket. How dare you do that? Yeah, you screw you. Like, <laughs> that's kind of how this feels. Like, all those choices where I said to myself, I'm not going to sacrifice. I'm not going to sacrifice my health, uh, financial health of my family and my wife. Like, I'm not going to do that. 
Mm-hmm. So, sorry, go on. I still, I still, I still, I know, I know it's going to work out. I know, you know, consistently working hard and building up will lead to opportunities and things that I can't even dream about. Uh, but that's probably what rubbed me the wrong way. Most of all is that feeling of like, mm. I, you know, I don't even know if I could have been good enough to make that, to be honest. I, until I make it, I don't know if I'm good enough. But, I so that would be it, yeah. right now, would you sacrifice your relationship with your wife to, to be to like, I, if I was the devil, right? I, poof, I show up and I'm like, okay, shake my hand. You know, it's like, would you, you get all the, the thing that this guy has, but you lose your relationship with your wife. Would you trade that? I mean, now that I saw the animation, yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. No. no. And I, and I know you well enough to know that I think that's the real answer, right? Is that you say no. It's like, okay, so let me ask you, like, would you sacrifice the experiences you've had playing Bloodborne and Zelda and um, Ooh, that's a tr- all those other things for, and I'm not going to say the whole thing, but I'll say like for, for half of that animation, right? For like... That's a hard one. For a half of that. That's a hard one. That's a really hard one because... Mm. I don't know. That's where it gets tricky, right? That's probably so, but, asking it. You annoying person. That's the equation. Right. I think it's like, and I know, I know, like there's tons of, like, here's the thing. Like another good equation is this. I mean, um, what I'm doing right now, I've decided to not play video games and to work on personal projects. I don't know how long, but I'm thinking maybe I can take a year or two, just every free time mm-hmm. to de-stress, to relax, to also re- assess how my brain views personal projects instead of performance pressure as a way to have fun and, have, and enjoy myself. Um, that's kind of what I'm choosing, to be honest, right now. Mm-hmm. But because I, think- I guess I wouldn't give up my past experiences because I love to, and the, those things I think they build. My voice cracky. <laughs> they build my new experiences and my new taste. And like, I feel like a better artist from experiencing great work. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like my inspiration cap is kind of met, and I'm like, I want to and poop it all out in art and see what happens. Yeah, I think it's exactly. I think. I think. So that's that's a conversation we've been having for a while that I that we can get go into again. But I think when it comes to this, it's like I know there's things that I could sacrifice. Like I know here's like, uh, Grand. Do you know who Graham Stefan is? He's like a, well, now he's like 29, I think, but he's a a 20 year old millionaire, uh, who's made a ton of money, but he doesn't buy anything. Like he doesn't buy coffee. The dude like refuses to, he makes his own coffee. He's like, here's my $1 coffee. And like that he makes himself, he makes his own iced coffee and he loves it. And he doesn't, he just doesn't buy like anything other than like real estate. He spends a hundred percent of his investment in that. And it's like, you know, I know that like, let's say a good one for most people is like buying, uh, alcohol. Another one would be like video games, whatever it is, your, your thing that you waste money on that doesn't give you money back. Um, you could stop buying all that today. Right. And let's say you buy video games. Let's say you spend $60 on a game, you know, uh, four times a year, right. That's, uh, $240, $240, yeah, $40, right. Um, that you would have to do stuff with. That's a, that's a good chunk of money that you could spend on, on a lot of things. Um, but that's not, how it works. And there's a comic about this. That I think is kind of interesting where there's a guy drinking a beer on the couch and his girlfriend or wife, whoever is looking at him and she's like, Oh, do you know how much that beer costs? And it goes through this whole thing, right? Like you would, if over 10 years, if you, if you took all the money you spent buying a beer and instead saved it up, you could afford a, a plane right now. Like you could afford an airplane. And then he turns to her and goes, okay, you don't drink beer. And she goes, no. And he goes, where's your airplane? Yeah. It's like, so the idea is that we're not, we look at the investment and we see the end result and we see all this stuff and we're like, that's so cool. That's amazing. But then when we look at what it would take to get there, it's like, well, I don't want to make those sacrifices. Right. And nor should you like you, like we've talked about some of them are unhealthy. Like some of them might be the opposite. Like right now he's doing really good. But then in 10 years, if he, you know, I'm not saying about this guy, like he, like you said, he might be the whole package, right. He might have a super healthy relationship with his wife and, and have, a good like spiritual con- like mental state like but in, maybe in ten years this stuff you know eats him up because he never found a relationship because he was busy making his art I mean, you see this in Hollywood all the time right people that don't get married until they're like 
you know, 50 or, you know, and it's like, now they're going to try to start a family. It's like, okay. And, and now we live yeah, long enough for you. Capable. Right. And, and some of them aren't right. They just get more married and divorced, married and divorced, married and divorced because they spent their whole lives. Unfortunately. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's what, what most people are meant for. And we see that, that success of where we imagined ourselves, but it's like, I don't know if we'd want to really yeah. be there if it to, meant the other things. Yeah. I definitely don't tend to give and follow advice that I don't think can apply to everybody. I don't, I mean, frick, dude, I don't know what advice can apply to anybody. It's very, it's very funny. few. It's funny. Like uh, exercise. Is I, okay. 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 If you say everybody, but not, don't mean it super literally. No, yes. there are people who's like, don't exercise and die. Of course. Right, but right. General common. Right. Okay. So if it, if it doesn't apply, we'll say to the the majority. Yeah. Exactly. So like most people is like, yeah, save your money. Uh, yes, invest it. Yes, uh, enjoy the simple things in life. You know, you might get depressed. Some people get depressed because they they uh, people die because literally they die of burnout, heart attack, uh, brain problems because they think they see those examples. I'm like, I'm going to do that. One guy drank a Red Bull like every day, all the time to work three jobs because he had this goal in mind and he had, he lost part of his brain due to it. Mm -hmm. And you, you also see those things and it's like, yeah. right. It's kind of like, yeah, you can drive experimental jet planes and experience things that no one else is going to experience. But sometimes you look at the statistics and go, okay, how many of those jet planes crash? You know, you can be the first man on the moon, but I think it was like, 10 people that died before him. Mm -hmm. There's several people like, uh, and people are still dying trying to land. There's that SpaceX guy that pilot that died a while back ago. I didn't know. That's sad. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so you do see those things and then you go like, Oh wait, yeah. Like, Whoa, I'm strong. He's such an inspiration. And he is, but a ton of people died before him who were just as capable. Right. And you, I do think you have to factor in, and as and is, is religious people, I know this is a bad word, but you do have to factor in that you don't have 100% control of your results is the way I'm going to put it, I guess. Like, um, the name of Jesus. like you could do everything right. And, and I think Job's a good example of this, but you can do everything right and then still uh, have your entire family get wiped out, right? By marauders, you know, you can do everything right. And then I think uh, be taken out of the Bible. Honestly. I love it. I know it's so important. It's so important. And I think so many people, it's like all this it, prosperity it gospel stuff. It's the narrative. Of yes. It, like, all, the, drops it. <laughs> all the prosperity, like you just believe and you're going to be rich. It's like Job. It's like, you just believe you're going to, it's like Job. It's like, <laughs> God would never want anything bad to happen to you. It's like Job. Like, you know, it's like every single person that thinks like, Oh, I just buy, I'm just going to, Go and I put it in like same thing. Fear God and love Him, Job. Right. Yeah, and it's or also this marriage. Yeah. There's also this idea of like, what's that called? Um, the transactional. It completely destroys that too. That it's just transaction, right? Whether it's with God or or if you're not a believer, like the universe, right? Like, yeah, oh, if I just put in, if I just put in everything, it's going to reward. So I, while I do acknowledge that that's the way it works, there's that transactional thing, right? Where it's like you put in this much effort and this much investment, and you will make it back generally. You could also just get hit by a car tomorrow. Yeah. Right? Like okay. that it's happens. I read in Frank's diary and a quote I wrote to myself at the end of the diary was, death is a gift from God from the hell that we create for ourselves. It was like... That's dark, know, dude. <laughs> That's freaking dark. It is true. Like when you read, when you find out what, no matter how positive this person was, how smart, how hardworking... There, you, you can't escape that tragedy. There are some people that just could not escape it. Some people did, good for them. God bless them. But there's probably hundreds of millions of stories of like just tragedy. They did their best. They prayed. They were generous. And it was like, thank you, God, that there is death. That's literally what happened after the first sin. It's like, okay, they got to die. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. they're going to live on forever. And it's they're going to create this hell for them. Like, thank goodness people die. These, like, Hitler think he mm -hmm. can, he will die. Thank goodness Stalin can die and will die because they would just pepper it, perpetuate this for all mm -hmm. eternity if they couldn't die. Yeah. It's, that got really, but it's, that got really interesting from where we started, but 
uh, I want to tie it all together if we can. Mm-hmm. So how do we tie in being grateful for death because- <laughs> to uh, the being jealous, I guess, maybe of, of, of what looks like guys gonna die. not ill gotten gains, but like, what's it called being, because it's like, he did it right. He's, but like, cause I think a lot of it's a mirror, right? I think a lot of what bothers us is, is this comparison aspect of like looking at where they are. And that was my dream. And I thought it was unachievable. I thought it was impossible to run a four minute mile, but this guy just did it. And now I feel yeah, like, easy. <laughs> well, yeah, well, cause well, it looks easy. Cause like I said, you can't see all the like hundreds of days of him just bleeding his feet, bleeding all the blisters and scraping off the calluses. Like we're not watching that, but it's like, yeah, I mean, he just ran it and it looked like nothing. It's like, yeah, okay. Sure. And then I think we also ignore, there are people like there is that I'm not there are Tony Stark. There is that I'm not Tony Stark aspect, which is like, you can work as hard as you want. You can be the very best, uh, basketball player. But if you're like, you know, five foot, like it's, it's like sorry you weren't born for this dude like there's there's these that aspect Monsters, of it uh, mustard university is basically a movie about that uh, right yes yes yeah 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 but he's like he's way more dedicated than then yeah solely so mike is more dedicated than Sully. yeah he knows it better and he discovers new meaning it's like i can still reapply this but he had to learn that no matter how hard he tried it wasn't gonna and that's, right. that's, I think that's the lesson America hates and we all hate. And I don't, I don't think that's quite the lesson. Like, it's like you said, I think the problem is we get, we get narrow. I think we look at our view of success and we think of like one goal. Like when I was in, in film school, everyone had the same goal and it was a stupid ass goal because I'm you had no control over it. No, they all wanted to win an Oscar. Oh, they all wanted to win an Oscar. It was, it was very clear. Like, that's how I know I made it. I win an Oscar. That's, that's like literally this thing I can hold up and show to people, look, I'm validated. Right. Um, and that's, what's going to prove I've made it like, and that definition of success, I think is one of the stupidest definitions ever because it's completely out of your control. You look at like Leonardo DiCaprio, right? You look at, um, Will Smith, just a few. Like if you're if you're a director, how many can you get? Like three? Yeah, I don't know. So that um, means out of your school, all of them would have to get an Oscar. Yeah. Like in the next ten years, your whole school would have to get them in order to be validated, and that, that, that this doesn't work. It's impossible. It's literally impossible. Not only that, but it's completely out of your control. I don't think you should have goals that are out of your and and I know, like I said, ultimately your entire life is out of your control. Like you get hit by a, a comet tomorrow, but you know. <laughs> As far as like, let's say my goal is to, you know, um, gain X amount of muscle and lose X amount of fat. Like that's something I can achieve, right? That's something that's, that's up to me, right? Reasonably, right? There are factors, but it's generally up to me to do that. And Oscar is something like, yeah, I can work towards it. But like Leonardo DiCaprio is arguably one of the best actors that's ever lived. And it took him forever to get one just because no one handed it to him, right? No one was like, I oh, hear you go. Like, you know, Will Smith still doesn't have an Oscar and he's arguably one of the most influential just people that come out of you know yeah film you know so it's like you need you need to broaden your scope so that's really what mike would learn is not that working hard doesn't pay off if you know but that maybe your goal it's is ridiculous. is the wrong goal it's outside of the, but then if you just shift it slightly it's like you know oh that's possible yeah right like the other day i was in uh oh yeah i was in a city hall here in holland and I was looking at the architecture and it was beautiful architecture. And I thought to myself, and my mind just kind of played out the story of the architect mm-hmm. who was inspired and who made this thing. And I would just think, you know, I'm proud of this architect. And I hope he doesn't feel like, yeah, but it's not Guggenheim. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question here. Okay. What are some things over the last, I'm just going to say three years. We're not even going to go back that far. Just three years that you've, that you've achieved? What are some high points? Um, um, being married, I think maybe that happened longer, like four or five yeah, years ago, years but we'll, ago. we'll count that. We'll say, we'll say married to a gorgeous woman. Okay. So that's one. Ah, oh, yeah. That's beautiful. She's amazing. Um, I discovered how to make Kisso, homemade Kisso. Yeah. That's a, is that a big one? Oh man. It's so <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So homemade Kisso. What else? I can name some for you if you can't. Yeah, think I'm going to, I'm going to say them, but I want to create a small side note. And this is a view I have of life. I think it's 
possible to have the same equal happiness as the guy who made and proudness of your work as the guy who made Guggenheim, the same or even more emotional happiness reaction to it, creating something way less impressive. No, I completely, I completely agree. But yeah, just go through and list list a few things. Yeah, and I would, and that, and then ultimately, that's what we want, right? As human beings, like I feel like people in Africa are going to be just as happy about having a fence and two chickens than me having a mansion. Oh, I think often more, usually more happy. Yeah, and that's like good for them. Now, give me my mansion <laughs> <laughs> and stay in that now. Okay. Things I'm proud of in the last two years. I created the Bell Rock. I was pretty happy with that. That was like yeah, okay. a new level oh. of quality for me. Um, I'm pretty happy with this CG environment that I'm creating based on the graveyard. It's pushed me farther than I've ever gone. I created a story for it for the first time, like a story driving my artwork. It's completely my story. Uh, moved a few times. I, I got booked for my biggest project and invested in $10,000 euros for creating an online course, which I've never done before. Worked on the Emmys, turned down the Oscars, turned down an Oscar. You should tell that to your friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, worked on the Emmys, turned down the Oscars. Um, How about the speaking my at relationship with you and Zach and made better, deeper friendships. Um, Would you say speaking at the Blender conference is a big one? Oh yeah, getting, getting randomly chosen to speak at the Blender conference. <laughs> that was pretty cool. It was super short; it was like five minutes. But okay. So if I took if I took the you that like, put yourself back in your shoes, your first day of like three D classes. Sure. Okay. Put yourself like in that mindset. So like, what's what are you watching at the time? What's what video games you playing? What's going on? Blizzard, Lich King, Cinematic. Okay. It's yeah. So good. Over and over again. That okay. So good. And then if I were to tell that, oh, okay, then one more thing. I think it's something else. I'll put you in that mindset. Sure. Yeah. Like I remember being three D school, and like it took me a week to create this three D cliff, and then I'm mm-hmm. like done, and I like see the render finish, and I bring up like a reference image, and be like. Dude, this looks like plastic. <laughs> right. So, like, and how long did it take you to like animate like a square bouncing or something or certain, you know? I, I, I'm pretty dumb. I went straight into character animation because I was like, I want to make my own short film. Mm-hmm. I still think it's pretty good for what at the time. Uh, but it took me, I remember I created this one character and it took me seven hours just to make the torso. And I was, oh, yeah. I was like, what is wrong with me? Why is this taking so long? But I was totally engrossed by it. Okay, so it took you seven hours to make a torso. So if you took that that person, and at that time, given the technology that was available at the time, showed them the ball rock and said, "Here, what do you think of this? What would you What would you have said?" I would say that guy's a pro. Yeah. Okay. So if you took if you took that guy and you showed him uh, your Blender talk, like not you, you're not watching yourself. Like what? <laughs> like this time warp. But like you saw like uh, somebody giving a talk like that. What do you think about that person? I'd say he seemed nervous. Man, he has a hot wife. <laughs> and dude, like he worked on the Emmys. That's like the top. That's as good as you can get. You worked yeah. on the Emmys. Would you feel the way you kind of feel now? Like, would you feel a little jealous? Like, how does this guy have have a hot spoken hot wife and gets to work on the Emmys? That's not fair. Uh, I didn't actually. I realistically, I think I'd be inspired to be like. Okay, so you might be inspired, but get to know that guy because I want to get married. Uh, he seems like a nice guy. Right. Like, I had that with Andrew Kramer when he did a talk and he showed, he put a picture of his family and stuff. And he talked about his journey and he even talked about how his parents supported him. I was like, dude, I love that he's also like a wholesome guy. Then I met him in person. And <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. We won't go there. <laughs> but yeah. It's honestly super fun to meet him in person. Super nice guy. Right. But so. You know, if if you look at if, if you look at yourself the way you look at other people, you'd realize like, damn, I want to be me. <laughs> you know, like I do want to be me. I like, like I or like I would have considered being where I am at now. Like a huge, like if I told you once again that film school, you know, three D, you know, school, 20, 19 year old kid, somebody's going to offer you ten thousand dollars despite the fact that you made nothing. Oh, like be off for an idea. Someone's going to pay you $10,000 for an idea. 
Like, I don't know. To me, that's... I'd be like, dude, I can live for like three years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm never going to spend any money ever again. <laughs> I'm never going to work again. That's, a, that's, that's all the... That's like 50 video games, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like, I can buy a PS4 and an Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. I can get like the GTX. <laughs> yeah. 10, 9, 780 at that time, probably. Yeah. So, so if you look at yourself... Thing, though, I would associate that success to having a house, a car, and those kind of things. And that's where it gets a little tricky too. It's like, wait a minute, why am I living in an attic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as, if, when you were young, if you, if you were to, to see those accomplishments, they would have seemed very hard to achieve or like crazy, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. And then if I were to tell you, like, that's you. Like, you made that that cool Balrog render. Like you sure. got that, right? You'd be like, damn, let's, that's so cool. And then we go and we do it and we're like, eh. <laughs> it's like we go, like, I want to know how many people get home. They win their Oscar, they go home, they put it on their shelves and they look and they're like, damn it, I feel nothing. <laughs> like I want, to, I want to know. I really wish I would to make a video of them getting their Oscar, going home, putting on the shelf and just being like, oh, okay. Still feel the same. <laughs> like, I imagine it takes a few weeks. Honestly. I think so. I, I think, and I don't know. And they get rejected for a movie project and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta believe that's, that's the case. they see an actor do a performance that's way in their own eyes, way better than what they can ever perform. Mm -hmm. And then he also directed the movie and they're like... <sighs> Without realizing that like they themselves are probably an inspiration for that actor. For sure. Like, right. I'm Was it weird to you? The, the guy who made the uh, story. <laughs> Yeah. Was it weird to you when you gave that talk, like that people looked at you as somebody to be respected? Oh, it was respected? Totally weird when I'd sit down and someone would come up and give me a business card. Or these two Spanish guys that were like in their 40s were just like, dude. And they wanted to talk to me. And they're like, yeah. they're, they're like dude, I was, can we do business? Like, oh, give, it, give us advice. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're on school and they're like, yeah, we have like about a year of runway if I saved up. And I'm like, how about you guys tell me how you did that? <laughs> <laughs> right. But like, that's the thing. We don't have that perspective on it, right? We don't have that full story. We don't have all that other stuff. And we, for some reason, are completely blind to what it is that we've done that that's, that's really great. You know, that like, that we would have, you know, just a few years ago been like absolutely blown away by like i'm coming up on 30 right now and that's a nice round number and so i'm looking at like at 10 years i've like 10 years of life since being an adult and like really grad since graduate like not graduate but like being in my career starting my career and to where i am today so i'm like 10 years of career right now yeah. and it's really weird to look back over it and be like yeah trying to put myself in that mindset of just being a like doughy eyed you know little film student that's like Wow. Like if you told me, like at the time I was really desperately trying to have a relationship. Like I, I really wanted to date somebody and you told me like, you're going to be happily married for six years. I would have been like, that's enough. Like that's all that's that I alone you, is worth it. When I, get married, when I got married, I was like, as long as I have enough money, I'm going to be happy. That's yeah. probably what my thought was. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's it's enough. True. It's true on many levels, to be honest. You know, what's funny is there, there's a story from a pastor. He talks about, which one, which one of you would see a baby take his first step and frown at them and then take <laughs> a picture of like... <laughs> Someone like running, a as Usain Bolt. Runner. Yeah. <laughs> be like, Screw you, baby, you're nothing. Oh, I just knocked over my mic. <laughs> Push him over again. And he says, like, when you, you, see the baby, when you see the parent and the baby taking the first step and they're like... Oh, what? And the baby's like, what? And the baby parents like, what? And then the baby falls and they're like, oh, it's okay. And then they put it back up. And he said, that's how God needs you. Right. I completely, yeah. I, and I, but I think we need to view ourselves that way. Like, so I've been trying to do this YouTube thing. And, and what was really hard for me is like, I wanted it to be, I wanted to be good at it right away. And I'm not, it's most of my videos still suck. Yeah. But it's one of the downsides of the internet, by the way. Yeah. Good comparison lack of context of like, mm -hmm. I'm sure in your city, in your neighborhood, you have you, like, people would be so impressed. No, actually the opposite. That's what's so funny. So what's, what's so funny about that is a prophet's not respected in their hometown. 
And the reason why is everyone watched them build to what they built. They're like, it's not special. He didn't do anything special, guys. That's true. Like when you, I go home, like to like my family, like like a lot of times when you go, like when famous people you're right, you're right. are around their family, they're like, they're not, they're not special. Like, why are you all listening to him? Like, give these inspirational talks. Like, he just he forgot how to tie his shoes the other day. Like, you know, they can see the context, and so they're like, they're not special, guys. Like, I don't know why. You know, and that's what's really weird. Like, try here's a good experiment. You know, you know how you know this. Like, if you share a YouTube video to your Facebook wall to all of your friends and family, they'll be like, okay, cool. But like, most of them won't even bother watching it. If you share it to strangers, like, this is so inspirational. This is oh, I didn't know this. Like, it's they like don't like yeah. And if one of your friends like tells you like I'm starting a business, you're like, okay, dude, yeah, sure, you're starting a business, all right, you know. But then you see someone else that's like started a business, a stranger that's not doing well, and you're like. Oh, he's like an inspiration, you know. So that's a deep one to unpack right there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess what I mean by it is like objectively. Mm-hmm. And within your context, within a context. Like if we drop you off in, I don't know, the Philippines, I think people would be blown away for sure. But that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Yeah. No, and that's 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 how it is. Like if I go someplace. Like you, like you see you at the Blender conference, right? Where people don't know everything in your life. They just see the one thing. They're like, oh, how'd you do that? Right? And it's like, we're all so different that we all have different things that we've, you know, learned from some people that other things like we don't want to learn from them, right? Like, so when it comes to this guy, it's like, you might want to learn his work ethic, how he gathers reference, his ability to like get into flow and just like work his butt off. But there might be other things you like don't want to learn from him, right? It's like, and he's probably looking at, maybe would look at someone like you and be like, how'd you have such a good relationship with your wife? How do you like, and there's some things that aren't, aren't compatible. There's some things that you can't have both ways and you just have to make a choice on I'm sure if we what you want. If a month with Chris Doe, just like in his house, like a family member and followed him around the work and stuff. I think a lot of that mysticism would kind of disappear with. <laughs> it kind of does. It, it kind of does. I've hung out with him a couple of times. A lady who's, She's just, she's amazing in the spoken and speaking, but she says, you know, she talks about disillusionment and she says, if you're like me, I feel like the first minute you spend with me as a disciple, you start, you, all of a sudden you're just like, oh, wait, it yeah. took like a minute and I realized she's not, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's where people say, don't meet your heroes, right? Everyone says like, don't meet your heroes because they just, so Chris doesn't disappoint, but you start to realize like, oh, this is just like a very practical way of like just the way his brain just works and he just he eats dinner like everyone else is everyone always is like i put on pants one leg at a time it's like so and then that sense that's where i don't like that like i'm not tony stark it's like no but you you're you and you could figure out what it is that you're that you can do well um and be successful at it but and then there is like i said you always have to keep in mind that element of like i could get hit by a car but there's no yeah. There's no point in living. That, There's no point in living that way, though. That's not, that's the thing. Like you have to keep in mind, like yeah, I could get hit by a car, but you can't live acting like you're gonna get hit by a car. You have to act like you're not. Here's what annoys me: Christo still makes sense to me. This Astartes guy. All I found <laughs> on his art station was three models before Astartes. Were they crappy? They were fine. <laughs> it'd be hilarious if they're like this 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 is a 3d model of this chick with like way oversized breasts that everyone makes in like this huge butt and it's like somehow her breasts and her butt both can face the camera at the same time it's like 90 percent of art station and it's like then he goes to make that like beautiful work of art yeah it, it's kind of like that honestly it, it's- i love it dude i love how many people it's just like they just take a woman like oversized proportions and then snap her spine and it's like here you go give me love <laughs> I feel like art station is amazing work, amazing environments, uh, and dragons and boobs. <laughs> guns. There's some guns in there. Oh, guns, yeah, for sure. Dragons, boobs, boys, and guns. Just highly detailed, man. Yeah, I love uh, death and robots, right? I, I <laughs> There's a part of me that wonders is like, could this bot guy be one of those few like Da Vinci's Beethoven things that it's like Maybe, maybe there is some people that you just hang out with them and they still don't make sense to you. They are different. It's yeah. Ridiculous. This is, a, this is like an enormous amount of passion and brain power and those things. I think there, the, the people I've met like that, there are those people. Have you watched Tiger King at all? Mm. Okay. Um, there, there are people out there that are very unique but you would think there's something wrong with them like the bait like like van gogh's right where it's like 
you're not all there, but it happens to be not all there in a way that leads to them making fantastic stuff as opposed to like pooping their pants. Right. Like, so, you know, there are people like that. I mean, I think, I think I've heard stories actually of, of artists that have like worn diapers to continue to work. Right. Like, oh, yeah. uh, it, you know, it takes, it takes a bit of, of something not quite, not quite right. You know, to, to be able to do that. To Yeah. I saw, I saw a video of Mark Zuckerberg. Now, when he got his, his dad was filming him with his admittance to Harvard and just mm-hmm. the way he behaved as a human being, you go, Oh wait, that's different. Dude, still, he still looks like a lizard person robot. <laughs> like he still sits there and he's like, yes, no, this is for your own good. <laughs> like, yeah, no, he's, he's got something, something, and not, this isn't a disparaging comment to say that, that, that there's something different, right? Cause obviously it's led to him having massive success. So this isn't like, Oh, you're, you're the, you know, the R word or whatever, right? Like, I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm saying it in a way that's like, you are, are special, right? You have something that's like a little off. It's so key in that. And you're so right. He, he is so funny to see that. He, he kind of just giggled and he's like, oh, I'm in Harvard. It was like, it was like a video game accomplishment for him. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I found kind of shocking. I was like, wait a minute. That's I think that's also what allowed him to like drop out, right? Like you have these people that just, it's just not that well, big of a, was, a deal. I imagine it was one of those people that it might've gotten kind of boring for him. Yeah, that I'm part, sure. Like he's, in he's a smart guy. Side, he creates these things. It's like for him, it's like, you know how you, when you're playing video games, you're like, Oh, look, I accomplished this. And the video yeah. is like, yeah, you're amazing. And you're like, okay. I feel like there are people that are like that. It's like uh, Elon Musk, right? When he was programming when he was, Eight. Well, you know, he's also one of these, right? Like you saw, you saw him when he sold PayPal, I believe, and he bought a Lamborghini. You um, see him, like fine. first off, he has this like random like like model with next to him. He has like he's all balding and everything, yeah. and he's like, and he's just sitting there casually, like, oh yeah, I uh, I uh, j- just made however many million dollars, six million or whatever it was from selling my thing. 60 million. I don't know. It's a lot of money. He sold 128 million for selling. 120 million. Yeah. 128 million dollars. He's like, so I bought a car and he's just being interviewed. He's just like chilling. He's still wearing like normal goofy ass clothes. And then he's just like, yeah, but I bought a car. It's like, yeah, I wanted it. You know, it's, it, there's a different, there's a weird thing. You know, it's like, you, you don't do that. If you're, if you're someone that's just normal, you know, that's, um, and, and so the, in that case, that's why I give the same advice. Like I tell, I'm working on a video right now and it's going to be, um, uh, famous overrated, have a kid. Um, okay. cause I really believe that like fame is, is most famous people, their big greatest accomplishment is still having a kid according to them. I, they could be lying, but like, you know, it's like, you'll probably be more satisfied as an average normal person by just creating because and that this goes into a really deep thing which is what i think everyone wants out of life and i think everyone has kind of the same three or four thing goals mm-hmm. and they just go about different ways of getting it um and a kid is pretty much like if you go and have a kid it meets all of your goals and you could argue either way you could argue religiously that that's makes sense because that's what we're commanded to do and you can argue argue this it works in every every belief system it works you know evolutionary same things like we need to perpetuate our species we need to and then have them be better than us right that's the that's another goal of like it once like whether you're evolutionary or you know it's not like they're one or the other either anyways but like whatever you believe this works okay so it's like you want to leave behind something that's better than yourself while you're doing that you want affirmation that it's good right so you want to be affirmed uh that your actions you're taking are good and um you also want to influence your current world around you, right? You want to have a big impact and a kid's a way to get all that. A kid is, you know, you leave an impact, you leave a legacy, you get love and you give love. And, um, yeah, it meets all of your kind of needs. I think th- those are more or less the needs that everyone has. And it's a vent your rage. Well, that's <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep that one off the table, but that, and that, but that is something that we see more too for training the rage venting to them no okay I'm, okay I, I, okay i'm glad you were being serious i was like uh <laughs> I'm gonna have to have a bit serious? serious question no no i didn't think you were being serious i, was, no, I wasn't sure do not. <laughs> so not spare the rock um no but it it's is boxing bug boxing yeah. boxing glove anyways yeah 
no. So anyways, the, the idea is, okay. is that's the, so that's, I think most people should have a kid. All right. So we got off really crazy, but I think it was a lot, of, a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. did it help at all? Get your feelings out to, to talk oh, about this. Dude, this is why I wanted to call you straight away. Cause yeah, I was, sorry like, for you. No, I mean, I, I need to, maybe it's better that there was a day. Otherwise I just would have got like, F this guy, F his work. I give up. Just grab the computer, throw it out the window. <laughs> like, I'm done. No, Alan, Alex, stop. Starts trying to strangle himself with his headphones. <laughs> Man, he's so weak. I can't even do this right. That'd be like a funny, a funny, quick 10 second video of like you working on After Effects or working in 3D in your project crashes. And you or see you something good. And it looks so silly. It looks almost good. And like, you know what renders you open that start is? You're like, oh, that's what TikTok's cool. for. That's what and TikTok's for. you scroll for. down and you see like all the zoom ins of like one person, one person. And it's just like, <laughs> Just throw away. Strangle <laughs> yourself with your headphones. Yeah. Yeah, that's that'd be a good TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> or even a good YouTube video, honestly. That could be a good short YouTube video. Yeah. The secret is doing. Now you got to go make it, <laughs> and then you're gonna try to shoot it, and then something's not gonna turn up right, and then you're gonna give up. <laughs> exactly. I've done it. I've done it a number of times. Oh, I've run plenty of ideas. Like I should film this and put it out today on YouTube. And then like, you sit down and the camera's like out of battery. You're like, well, guess I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh. oh man. But I, so this is my conclusion though. Like I definitely am getting, want to get to the point emotionally where I'm totally happy for this guy and I applaud what he did and I let it inspire me. And I feel like one thing, key thing God said to me is, don't meditate on things too big. Like, even though this one hits a bit closer to home, like we don't sit here and beat ourselves up because we're not like Elon Musk. I do. You do? Sometimes. <laughs> I have that, I have that little weirdness. I got, I got, a, I'm a little off. So I'm like, too. like I see you with the same Tony Robbins and the part of me is like, <sighs> It's like, yeah, I was on stage 13 hours, walked, I don't know how many miles. Uh, yeah, now tomorrow I'm going to do this. And, uh, really yeah, not that stuff. But for me, it's it's like I could, I have the the drive to make something for other people. Like a lot of people, like I know people that legitimately just say like, I don't ever want to own a business. I just want to work and be paid and have a life. And then that is, I think should be applauded. I think we should spend less time telling everyone to go be entrepreneurs that could, that you know, think that it's going to make them happy. It's not like you got to figure out what's going to make you happy and then go do that. Um, and, and really nothing can make you happy. You know what I mean? You have to, to, to like, be happy, but, I feel like but most entrepreneurs don't need to be convinced. They need to be given tools. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So telling everyone like, it's going to be so great. You're going to have all this freedom. Go work That's for yourself. Like, like for yeah. me, it just happened. And I was like, Oh, it's too bad. There's not more tools. And that's why okay. I created it. Like, I'm definitely not going to, convince people to be entrepreneurs and bring people on my trailer, on my trailer video and be like, this guy became an entrepreneur and he makes 500,000 a second and right. he can do the same. Right. I think most people, uh, the stress of every day going to work is far less than the stress of not knowing where your next meal is coming from. And for me, it's just the opposite. Like for me, I'm much more comfortable swimming in the stress of not knowing the future and not having it, but then not having to deal with, some annoying, yeah. you know, so oh, change that, do this. Some days I get sick of it. And I'm like, that's it. I'm going to take a part-time job. And then I yeah, and then you stick out with it for like a month. Come on. <laughs> I've watched you try. I finished the training. <laughs> and then I was like, the Emmys came in or something came in. No, no, that was even before it. That was way before the Emmys. Some random project came in. And I was like, hey, I got like three projects coming up. I was like, I work part-time. And they're like, no, I'm not like, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I did three weeks of training and then one week of, of actual work. And I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just saying, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I took the, the guy next to me, sorry to interrupt, but the guy next yeah. to me, he, he, it's so funny. He just kind of looked at me and he was like, oh, I'm another guy, you know, it just looks like a model, by the way. I was like, he came to like give us some training. I'm like, this guy could legit make it as a model. Like, That's like half of Spain though. No. <laughs> <laughs> My experience. I go, whenever I travel someplace new, it's funny. I feel like whenever you travel someplace new, all you notice is like all the hot people. You're like, man, everyone in this culture is awesome. 
Yeah. And like all the like other people just like blur. <laughs> like, so I was talking to him and I was like, I had a bad call or something. I was, I was talking about business or something. He's like, yeah, you know, I want to become a policeman because you can't get fired or I want to work for the government because you can't get fired and then I'm set for stuff. And he says, like, I know you get this job because he wants to do it. <laughs> he said that to me. And I was like, okay. And then like a few days later, I'm like, so I'm quitting. He's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I got <laughs> freelance work. You know, I run the side business. Can I work on this and that? And he was just kind of like, See you later. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty funny. And then, like, yeah, people started going like in the middle of their calls. They were like, and they were, they were like, and the call in the break. So my brother is thinking of starting a business. Do you think you could help him out? <laughs> That's funny. That was That's funny. Fun. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I don't think. I think some people aren't like. It's what Gary Vaynerchuk kind of says is like, you're born an entrepreneur, and I don't like that necessarily. I think people can change, but I do think, I do think that if you're someone that that not knowing where your next meal is coming from is going to stress you the frick out. Like you, you, this is not the line of work for you. Um, but on, uh, so you were wrapping it up saying that you shouldn't worry about things that are too big. And I got off on the Elon Musk thing. So you shouldn't worry about things that are, that are so far off. You're preoccupied by yourself with things too big for you. And that's, that's yeah. true. It's like a humbling thing of like, you know, I think that's the big downfall of Twitter in many ways is that all it is is people trying to say, like to define life and politics and complexities within uh, yeah yeah character. yeah it's exactly that yeah no it's exactly that it's like this idea that we can the future is so far off and that's such a big thing like why would you define yourself by something so small that's my whole oscar problem right like you, you have no idea what your life could hold in the next 10 years and you're going to call yourself a failure because you didn't get an oscar yeah. that like like less than 0.0001 percent of people will get yeah, exactly. Like up until now, for example, bringing it to home with a Stardis, like mm -hmm. there has been nothing like it, at least in my eyes, that has been made by an individual. Nothing quite like that. Uh, yeah, there's nothing I'm aware of anyway, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's no way in logical reality, for goodness sake, that I should all of a sudden make that my new bar. Right. It's like, no, I'm working with Zach, I'm working with you, and I'm way better than you guys, so like, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're way better than me at, at everything artistic wise. No, I don't think so. Oh, for sure. For sure. I've spent most of my time trying to get good at business. So I'm, I've slacked on the, the art really? side. Um, being 100% honest, when I saw you work on the logo and what you made, I was like, dang, I couldn't do that in a blender as quickly as you did. And on like, which thing? The, what's it called? Rose and Rogues logo? No, the other one. Oh, Godfall. Godfall. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was like, dude, that's, that's really good. Um, so the big, Thanks. But at least <laughs> I appreciate it. I mean, it. And, but anyways, that's kind of, that's my context. That's my bar. Like I can look at Zach's videos. I'm not going to look at Laura of the Rings and be like, well, it's going to have that kind of, you know, quality. I, I can look at Zach's videos and be like, okay, I'm going to aim to like be inspired and match that level. That's realistic. That's understandable. I'm in contact with him. He can help me reach that. You can help me get better at after effects. And that's kind of mm -hmm. what I feel like God told me is like, don't, don't try. Don't even try. You're, it's not, it's not worth it. Be inspired. Yeah. I'm that's, like, I don't, I'm not going to watch Mad Max and then be like, that's it. I'm taking a car to the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do think, I do think there's that what's, what's the thing about this one that's different. I think, and I, I is because it's like it's the whole one person thing. Because yeah. you look at something like like a Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, you're like, that's fine. I don't have a team. I haven't built up, you know, an, an army of people. So why should I think I can make that? But this is like you could, you could make it if that's you just. That's the problem. Like, <laughs> that must happen to directors all the time. Like, well, I'm sure. Imagine you're in mid production of some like medieval Robin Hood movie, and then Lord of the Rings comes out, <laughs> and you're just like. I'm done. <laughs> you're, you're sitting here, you're Ridley Scott directing Kingdom of Heaven and then Lord of the Rings comes out. You're yeah, like, exactly. well, screw this. I'm or, making this three hour movie. No one's going to watch. You're, it, you're directing a Star Trek episode and not me. So I Star Trek, B movie type thing, mm -hmm. direct on video. <laughs> and then Blade Runner comes out. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I gotta believe, I gotta believe that's the case. Uh, like, and it's hard because it's like, there's sometimes you need to listen and, and look at other things and challenge yourself. Right. And be like, Oh, I could be doing better and I do need to improve. And that's something important. But you know, for me, what I've been trying to compare myself to is my past and not my future. Cause the future is unknown. I don't know what that's going to hold. And I, I don't have control over yeah. what, what could pop up. So instead of looking like at other people or at where I want to be, I just look backwards. I'm like, am I still progressing? Like, am I moving? Am I wiser, stronger? And there's things I've, I've regressed in. Like I'm weaker now than I was when in my twenties. So it's like, okay, that needs to change. Like I need to build up more muscle and endurance and I stuff. I pulled my back on a trampoline. That's all. <laughs> that's part of getting older. But I, I was like, I, and after like five minutes of jumping, I was like, <laughs> yeah. And I was yeah. I'm like I'm like we're I'm you know almost thirty. I'm twenty nine. You're what twenty eight or a little yeah. younger still. Yeah, twenty eight. Like so, it's like uh, we can like still be healthy. Two in we, boxing. Like, yeah, I could. Get, I got. I would get like hit on the head by a metal thing. And it, like didn't hurt at all, and now it's like I. I Bump my knee a cracker bit on and then passed out. <laughs> yeah, it is. Did I tell you that story? No. I bumped my knee a cracker barrel. Michelle asked me to get a game. You know what cracker barrel is? Yeah, yeah, I know what a cracker barrel is. So I bumped my knee getting up to like get one of the games that you play. Uh-huh. Like waiting for food and I sit back down. And I just thought it was kind of like warmth going up my legs. Uh-huh. And I started like legit almost passing out. Like I turned white. It took me wow. 15 minutes to recover from bumping my knee. <laughs> must have hit like a nerve or something. Yeah, I think so. And the waitress is all like, are you okay? And I'm like looking at the floor like, please don't. I don't want to have to lay down on the floor yeah. and a cracker barrel. My grandpa oh, was man. like, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I fought in the war. <laughs> <laughs> lost my knee. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. was 15 miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like uphill to school both ways in the snow. Carrying my friends <laughs> yeah yeah i know and it's like ah my knee ah oh i don't feel so good no i don't know yeah i laughed too hard i feel like i'm gonna pass out Jeez. yeah no for me it was like yes yeah, it was comparing but i try to compare where i was right it's like so that's a much better for me barometer because it's like i have control of that i've controlled where i was and where i am right this second but as far as the future like i have no idea what's going to happen so i'm not going to set these goals and then not be able to meet them and then be disappointed because there's something out of my control that I couldn't, I couldn't do. I think it's still good. To, I have goals. It's not like I don't set goals. Obviously, you know that we've set goals together before, but I think it's, I think it's more valuable for me at where I'm at right now to just be like, okay, where was I yesterday? And am I moving forward? Like, am I making progress? Cause I had a year where I didn't hit a single goal and I had to realize like, Oh, like I can't let that just be defeating like I did make progress. Like I did get new work. I did do this stuff, but like, yeah. and that's what I, in the course, it's more about how you grow as a journey and more than achieving the goals. Right. Yeah. And I, so I'm kind of giving up, like, I'm not giving up on goals, but I'm not paying such a close attention. Like I'm sending them and then not looking at them and just trying to do, they're just like a general, you know, it's not like I need to win an Oscar. It's like more of like, I want to be, in this sort of an area, like I am like throwing a dart more, right. You know what I mean? It's like, as long as I land on the wall, yeah. like I'm happy. Like I just want to be over in that zone mm-hmm. and where I specifically land, I'm not gonna be too, too worried about, but I need to be over there for other people. Maybe they need very specific goals and that might help them. But for me, it's like, I'm just gonna, I'm mostly going to worry about like, am I moving forward? You know, uh, I'm not trying the destination isn't, you know, as specific as I want it to be. I'm more of one to make sure that I'm moving towards a, a, that general area. And then when I get close, I can worry about specifics, but yeah, like, I'll be honest. I did literally think to myself as a kid, after watching real rings, I was like, if I don't, if I die without making something like that good, it's like something's wrong. And definitely as mm-hmm. an adult, I'm like, no, nah, <laughs> no. Well, uh, I'm going to be very disappointed when I die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more like, you're like sitting here on like with like millions of dollars. Everyone loves you. Tons of grandkids. You're like, I never made Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're like completely happy. The I'm world's really at peace. That people didn't make the next Lord of the Rings or Star Wars is because they didn't want to. Because they didn't what? Want to. I was like, mm-hmm. man, you got VFX. You got millions of dollars. You have actors. Why don't you just do it? Um, yeah. And I was like, well, if I get the same opportunity, I'll make something like that. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I mean, there's a get the opportunity. Then it's not have producers swipe it from you and have it. a good, a good example of, I think how hard it is to make Lord of the Rings in, in star Wars is not even the people that made Lord of the Rings and star Wars could do it again. Exactly. Like that's, that's how hard that is to make that, that even the person that made it can't make it twice. So I hope you found some value in watching our conversation. Um, if you want to see more, or if you didn't have time to watch this whole thing, but want some of this broken down, hit subscribe as I'll be releasing more videos on this topic and others in the future. And feel free to smash that like button or tap that like button, or just gently press the like button long as it gets hit in some way so that I know that you enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next one.